Ia, am și justiție pe anul rău. Welcome to Redeemer United Church of Christ, located in Sussex, Wisconsin. I am Adam Stratmeyer, and the confirmation class will be leading worship today. We will begin this morning with sharing some announcements. Integrational faith exploration activities will take place between worship services from 9.30 to 10 a.m. Please join us. Our quarterly congregational meeting will be after worship on October 24th. This Friday, Pastor Julie will be off, so there will be no community service hours this Friday. If you are joining us online, please take a minute to fill out the Who's Wearing the Chair survey located in the Zoom chat or in the Facebook comment section. To do this, simply copy and paste the link in the chat box into your internet browser and complete the questions. This will help us to con connect with those of you who are virtually here today. We are a church spiritually alive and growing, radically inclusive and engaged in our communities. Our pastor is Julie Eklund. Today we celebrate the 18th Sunday after Pentecost and Confirmation. Our welcoming music today is provided by Dan Stolper and Mary Doporella.
Please join me in the call to worship. I am the church, you are the church. We are the church together. We depend on our seniors and longtime members to remember where we came from and where we have been. We, we are, are the, the church, church together. together. We depend on our children to retell our sacred stories as they grow. We are the church together. We depend on our youth and young adults to ask us why we do things this way and to suggest something new. We, we are, are the, the church, church together. together. We need each other to be the church. We, we are, are the, the church, church together. together. Please join in singing the gathering song. So I 
please join me in the prayer of invitation. Gracious and loving God, thank you for this journey full of fun and faith building. This journey has, has opened, opened my eyes to new experiences, experiences and, and lessons, lessons I, will I will never forget. forget. This journey of faith, faith has, has taught, taught me to follow a better road. road. Thank, thank you for this journey of learning about my faith and new experiences. I enjoy retreat. <laughs> Let's start it over. Oh, okay. Gracious and loving God, thank you for the, oh yeah, thank you for this journey full of fun and faith building. This journey has opened my eyes to new experiences and lessons I will never forget. This journey of faith has taught me to follow a better road. Thank you for this journey of learning about my faith and new experiences. I enjoyed our youth retreat where I met so many amazing, faithful, and positive people. As congregation, we, we lift, lift these, these joyous prayers to you, O oh God. Continue to strengthen these youth and bless them along their journey. Amen. Though we are gathered today in joy, we know we don't always act in the ways of Christ. May we seek to always do better. Let us confess together. Creator of us all, we sometimes forget. We forget that we are not alone. We forget that you made us. We forget that we have had help along the way. We forget to ask for what we need. Embodied God, remind us that we are surrounded. We are surrounded by the people you have created and by the many gifts you have given them to share. Remind us of our own gifts and the ways we may use them in community. Suffering Savior, we confess that in our own struggle to survive, we have ignored other communities. We have forgotten that they too have the right to survive. Make us mindful. Make us compassionate. Help us to see you in one another. In your name we pray. Amen. Beloved in Christ, know that you are God's own and that through divine love you are freed to begin anew the work of living together in compassionate community. We have some anniversaries. See, my eyes are getting bad. I can't read. Brian and Patty B and Fred and Linda S today. Fred and Linda are gone celebrating. Is anyone else anniversaries today? We have Barb and Bill A and Howie and Claire B C. Any other anniversaries? Yes. Daughter Heather. What's her husband's name? Lee. Is how many years? Thirteen. Happy anniversary. Any others? All right, and we have some birthdays. Today we have Jack F., Jerry H., and David N. We have John W., Lori K., Blair S., Jack E., Charlie K., George K., 
Dave S, Haley H, Deacon R, who's all here? George and Charlie. Did you say something? Oh, yeah, got them. I saw them. Anybody else here or any other birthdays we missed? All right, let's sing. What a glad day to be your birthday on a And I see Barb and Bill hiding back there. Happy anniversary. How many years? 47. 47. Congratulations. Well, we wish everyone uh, many, many anniversaries ahead. Bl blissful and blessed and many birthdays. Blissful and blessed. And now it is time for a child of all of us and our confirmation students will lead us. Hello. How's your day? How's your morning? Good. Okay, so today we're going to be reading The Hungry, The Very Hungry Caterpillar. Who knows this book? I know this book, yeah. All of you do. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Adam's going to be holding up the pictures and I'll be reading. Okay. The Very Hungry Caterpillar by Eric Carle. In the light of the moon, a little egg lay on a leaf. One Sunday morning, the warm sun came up and pop out of the egg came a tiny and very hungry caterpillar. He started to look for some food. On Monday, he ate through one apple, but he was still hungry. On Tuesday, he ate through two pears, but he was still hungry. On Wednesday, he ate through three plums, but he was still hungry. On Thursday, he ate through four strawberries, but he was still hungry. On Friday, he ate through five oranges, but he was still hungry. On Saturday, he ate through one piece of chocolate cake, one ice cream cone, one pickle, one slice of Swiss cheese, one slice of salami, one lollipop, one piece of cherry pie, one sausage, one cupcake, and one slice of watermelon. That night, he had a stomach ache. The next day was Sunday again. The caterpillar ate through one nice green leaf, and after that, he felt much better. Now he wasn't hungry anymore. And he wasn't a little caterpillar anymore. He was a big, fat caterpillar. He built a small house called a cocoon around himself. He stayed inside for more than two weeks. Then he nibbled a hole in the cocoon, pushed his way out, and... He was a beautiful butterfly. Hey. <laughs> okay, so now questions we have is, why did the caterpillar eat so much? Does anyone know? He was hungry. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah? Yeah, he was very, very hungry. Mm -hmm. That's why he ate so much, especially on Saturday, right? He ate all the junk food. So what happened at the end? He did become a butterfly. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Yeah, he made a cocoon. Does anyone know what a cocoon is? Yeah. Yeah. 
It is a caterpillar's house. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything else? That was it? <laughs> yeah, and he made his own house, and he lived there for two weeks. Isn't that cool? So um, we, Conference, started our journey as caterpillars, and the food in the book represents the hard work along the way, like our classes and the retreat and the, our projects that we did. And then after our journey and our crazy year, that was more than two weeks, <laughs> us compromise are like the butterfly that went through our own transformations to discover our own faith. Isn't that cool? So we're all like butterflies. And today we have some butterflies for you. You have some? Look at that. Isn't that fun? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the end. Our scripture reading today is James 5, 13 through 20. Are there any of you in trouble? Then pray. Are any of you in good spirits? Then sing a hymn of praise. Are any of you sick? Then call for the elders of the church and have them pray over those who are sick and anoint them with the oil in the name of Christ. And this prayer offered in faith will make them well, and Christ will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. So confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayers of just are powerful and effective. Elijah was human just like us, yet he prayed that it wouldn't rain, and it didn't rain for three and a half years. Then he prayed again, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crop. My sisters and brothers, if you should wander from the truth and another should bring you back, remember that wh whoever turns sinners from the error of their ways saves them from a death and cancels a multitude of sins. These are the words of our still-speaking God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. We are gathered in celebration and in love to worship and praise you, O oh God. Help us to celebrate your word and take action for your will. And may the meditation of our hearts and the words upon my lips be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Our confirmation students began their journey on September 29th, 2019. We as a congregation blessed them in worship and prayed over them for their journey ahead. The weekend of November 8th through 10th in 2019, we traveled as a group to Pilgrim Center, now renamed De Chola Center, for our confirmation retreat. This retreat for most of the confirmation students was the highlight of their confirmation experience, mostly because they got to have dance parties and other outdoor activities, but I'll give them the benefit of the doubt also because of the new people they met, the introduction of different ways to discover and express their spiritual connection, and new ways to learn the stories of our faith 
that direct the ways we live and serve in Christ. Throughout this journey, they had a total of seven two and a half hour classes, community service hours, time together with their faith partners, homework, and a final project. Everything was complete before COVID hit, except their final projects. But they still did their projects, and they learned a new skill, and presented to their classmates, parents, faith partners, Rick Locken and myself, over Zoom. We decided to wait to get confirmed, because having all of the family present, along with a laying of hands, would be an important part of the day. And we were hoping to not have limits on people or having to wear masks. And that was all before we knew how long this pandemic would stretch out. We thought we would be waiting six months max, but we never thought it would be a year and a half. So this summer, we saw a stretch of hope. Numbers are down, masks no longer required, and we plan to finally get confirmed in the fall. And we indeed, indeed did move forward. And this day is not exactly as they intended it to go, but we're still moving forward anyway. We still have most of the people we love, and we are still going to do the laying of hands. It's just going to be limited, and we have to wear masks. Of the six lectionary readings the confirmation students chose, the reading from James for today. They wanted scripture that represented celebration of this day and their faith journeys they've traveled so far. I do not believe that I have ever preached on any scripture from the epistle of James. James is quite short, only five chapters long. The epistle has a central message, is... If you are a follower of Christ, then act like it. In the second chapter, James writes, and this I think reflects most of the five chapters, James writes, My sisters and brothers, what good is it to profess faith without practicing it? Such faith has no power to save. If any are in need of clothes and have no food to live on, and one of you says to them, Goodbye and good luck, stay warm and well fed without giving them the bare necessities of life, then what good is it? So it is with faith. If good deeds don't go with it, faith is dead. Some of you will say that you have faith while I have deeds. Fine, I'll prove to you that I have faith by showing you my good deeds. Now you prove to me that you have faith without any good deeds to show. You believe in the one God, fine. But even the demons have the same belief, and they tremble with fear. Don't you realize, you idiots, that faith without good deeds is useless? The reading for today is actually the last eight verses of that entire epistle. The beginning of the reading is asking a question and then answering it. So I'd like to spend a bit of time with each question. The first question is, are any of you in trouble? No? Now when I first heard that question, I immediately reverted to my youth, when that seems a bit more of a common question, like, are you in trouble? Like, did you get grounded? You did? No? <laughs> Or perhaps maybe an adult virgin, like, are you in trouble with the law? But the answer that is given in response to this question leads me to believe this question is a bit more comprehensive. Perhaps more like, what is troubling you? What are you troubled about? Is there something causing you trouble? I think we can all answer that question. What is troubling you? Maybe it's your job or lack thereof. Maybe it's the pandemic and the state of the country. Maybe it's your 
you're worried about your children and their struggles. Maybe for our teenagers, they're stressed about school or getting into college or grades or something. Most of us have something to worry about. The answer, according to James, is prayer. The answer to, are any of you in trouble, is two words, then pray. Prayer, we give it to God. We admit that ultimately most things are beyond our control. And once we acknowledge that we can only do so much and hand it over to God, it releases some of the pressure we put ourselves in. And we have to trust that what we let go of, God will pick up. And that's tough to do for most of us. The second question is, are any of you in good spirits? Thank you, Bob. Okay, yay, some more people in good spirits. I hope we are. We're here to celebrate, right, the accomplishments of our young people. So I hope many of you are in good spirits. It is usually no secret when we're in good spirits, right? We smile, we laugh, we often clap or dance along to our music. Sometimes we add the drums, right, Dan? James says that if you are in good spirits, then sing a hymn of praise. Be thankful. Rejoice for God's abundant goodness and blessings. Praise God's holy name. Sing hallelujah. Isn't our blessings and when we're in a good mood a lot better when we can come together and celebrate and worship together? We need to announce that and we all say, woohoo! <laughs> Thank you. Come on, you guys. Get some energy in here. (laughs) The third question James asks is, are any of you sick? When I think of the definition of sick, to me it means not just our physical bodies, but also our mental well-being, our, our stresses, our anxieties, how we're feeling in the inside. And this time, the answer to are any of you sick is a bit more complicated than the answers to the other questions. James says, then call for the elders of the church and have them pray over those who are sick and anoint them with oil in the name of Christ. And this prayer offered in faith will make them well, and Christ will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. So confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. It's been a little while since we've done the anointing, but think back when we had those services of prayer and anointing. There's something about that. There's something about power of that prayer over one another. For me, when we receive anointing, it adds another layer of connection. There's also truth to the power of confession and forgiveness. When we engage in sinful behavior, it doesn't make us feel good. It usually makes us feel fearful or angry and behave in ways that do not represent the love of neighbor. We may sin because it gives us a taste of power, but that power doesn't sustain us. It doesn't last. Confession and prayer, the gathered, the anointing, is what brings us that healing, a feeling of peace and completeness. Now, examining these three questions and answers as a whole, I think this is just reinforcing the overall message of James. Whatever is happening in your life, whatever ways of the world that is causing you trouble, the answer is with God, is with faith and following Christ. If you believe There must be action taken with it. Prayer, confession, anointing, worship. And I hope that is what Jamie and Aaron and Isabel 
and Adam learned from their journey. How we live our lives should be rooted in our faith of following Jesus. We should choose to take the actions we take because we follow Christ and love our neighbors. When we find ourselves, when you find yourselves struggling with fear or sin or uncertainty, that we go to God in prayer, we go to our elders for anointing, we confess and seek forgiveness. And when all things are going great, when we are in good spirits, when we need to be thankful, we come together, we praise God, and we worship with hymns of praise. And these things are not to be done alone. They are done with those who are committed to being faithful followers of Christ. We are all the church together. In this last year and a half that we waited, I think we've had all of these, am I right? Troubles, good spirits, and sickness. But what gets you through these difficult times that we face in life is faith and faithful actions. Following what the world does will not bring you peace. Prayer, thankfulness, and forgiveness is the answer to the questions you seek. And just to remind everyone, everyone in this room needs a reminder, including our confirmation students, confirmation doesn't symbolize the end of your faith journey. You are now just butterflies about to take flight. You have the entire faith migration journey ahead of you. A journey that is unpredictable and at times can be difficult. But staying true to your connection with the divine, you will find peace in the journey. So on this migration, if you ever get lost, remember to gather together with your people. Gather together. Gather with your people together in prayer. Amen. We invite to come forward those who wish to affirm their baptism by being confirmed. Aaron Lechman, Isabel Netty, and Adam Stratmeyer. Friends in Christ, we all are received into the church through the sacrament of baptism. These people have found nurture and support in the midst of the family of Christ. Through prayer and study, they have been led by the Holy Spirit to affirm their baptism and to claim in our presence their covenantal relationship with Christ and the members of the church. They are here for service to Jesus Christ using the gifts which the Holy Spirit bestows. You are no longer strangers and sojourners, but you are equally citizens with the saints and members of the household of God built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Christ Jesus alone being the cornerstone in whom the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in Christ, in whom you also are built into it for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. Aaron, Isabel, and Adam, do you desire to affirm your baptism into the faith and family of Jesus Christ? If so, please answer, I do. I do. 
Do you renounce the powers of evil and desire the freedom of new life in Christ? If so, please answer, I do. I do. do you profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? If so, please answer, I do. I do. do you promise by the grace of God to be Christ's disciple, to follow in the way of our Savior, to resist oppression and evil, to show love and justice, and to witness to the work and word of Jesus Christ as best you are able? If so, please answer, I promise with the help of God. I promise with the help of God. Do you promise, according to the grace given you, to grow in the Christian faith and to be a faithful member of the Church of Jesus Christ, celebrating Christ's presence and furthering Christ's mission in all the world? If so, please answer, I promise with the help of God. Let us all unite with the church in all times and places in confessing our faith in the triune God. Do you believe in God? I believe in God. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit. Please join me in this prayer. O oh God, my God, known to me in Jesus Christ, I give myself to you as your own to love and serve you faithfully all the days of my life. Amen. Let us pray in silence. And let us pray together. Almighty God, who in baptism received these your servants into the church, forgave their sins, and promised them eternal life, increase in them the gifts of your Holy Spirit, grant love for others, joy in serving you, peace in disagreement, patience in suffering, kindness toward all people, goodness in evil times, faithfulness in temptation, gentleness in the face of opposition, self-control in all things, thereby strengthen them for their ministry in the world, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. May the faith partner and family of Aaron please come forward. Go ahead and kneel, Aaron. I'm Chuck Kirby. I had the joy of uh, spending time and, and getting to know Aaron for the last two years. And I have the pleasure of uh, reading his faith statement. I grew up going to Calvary Memorial United Church of Christ. I was baptized, attended Sunday school, and vacation Bible school. My mom was active at the church, and she always took me with her. I followed in her path and her direction. Coming to Redeemer and going through confirmation was a chance for me to learn about my faith and decide the path I wanted to take. I will always be learning and want to be a good example for others. I remember seeing a picture of a person with arrows showing us that there are many ways our faith can lead us. My path not, might not be the same as others, but is the one I chose. 
When we had our weekend retreat at the Pilgrim Center, this was the first time I was away from my family. I had fun being around faithful, amazing, and positive people. I enjoyed the labyrinth where I found peace from outside stress, thought about how I want to live my life, and prayed to help me find my direction. I want God to be a part of my life and help guide me. I also want to become a member of Redeemer, where I can continue to learn and be a part of a church family. Going through this experience, I have learned many things and have met many amazing people along the way. Please place your hands upon Aaron. Those in the congregation, please outstretch your arms towards him. Strengthen, O oh God, this your servant, Aaron Lechman, with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever and daily increase in him your Holy Spirit until you receive him at last in your eternal home. And may all the people say, Amen. May the faith partner and family of Isabel please come forward. I am Mary Doparella, and I had the joy of being Isabel's faith partner. This is Isabel's faith statement. My past faith journey has opened my eyes to connections between myself and the people around me. I learned that the way to go through a faith journey and or hard times is to have people that love and will support you to the end. People that care of the same issues may have one small voice individually, but together their voices are stronger. This faith journey revealed the ones that truly do care and who genuinely want the best for me. I may not have been able to be with them physically in person many times, but I was still able to find connections between myself and them. I am very grateful for those lifeline relationships that I gained through this journey. I am very thankful for the opportunity and the connections with God and those around me. Please place your hands upon Isabel. Those in the congregation, please outstretch your arms. Strengthen, O oh God, this your servant, Isabel Nettie, with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever and daily increase in her, your Holy Spirit, until you receive her at last in your eternal home. And may all the people say, Amen. May the faith partner and family of Adam please come forward. Hi, I'm Ann Weed, and I had the privilege of being Adam's faith partner. This is his faith statement. Throughout my faith journey, I faced many challenges, such as having faith throughout my first high school hockey season, through my freshman year, and throughout the pandemic. 
The statement, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, applies to my faith journey because throughout the past year, our confirmation class was delayed. This meant that we had to hold on over a year longer in order to be confirmed. To hold on during this long period, I thought back to the lessons I was taught over my confirmation journey. One specific lesson that got me through these tough times was when we talked about how some events that happen in the Bible aren't exactly literal, but have meaning behind them. This lesson made me rethink everything that I learned in the Bible as a kid. Now I feel as if my faith has grown much stronger and is more resilient than ever because of all the challenges I faced and what I was taught to interpret the Bible to really be. Please place your hands upon Adam and those in the congregation. Please outstretch your arms. Strengthen, O oh God, this your servant, Adam Stratmeyer, with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever, and in daily increase in him your Holy Spirit, until you receive him at last in your eternal home. And may all the people say, Amen. Stay up here. We rejoice, O merciful God, with these people in the gift of the Holy Spirit and the Spirit's power to awaken us to new truth and to inspire us to venture into fullness of life. We give you thanks that they have been moved to affirm their baptism. Help them to live not for themselves, but for Christ and those whom Christ loves. Keep them steady and abounding in hope, never giving up, pressing toward the goal of life with you and Jesus Christ. And may all the people say together, Amen. By your baptism, you were made one with us in the body of Christ, the church. Today we rejoice in your pilgrimage of faith, which has brought you to this time and place. We celebrate your presence in this household of faith. Do you promise to participate in the life and mission of this family of God's people, sharing regularly in the worship of God and enlisting in the work of this local church as it serves this community and the world? If so, please answer, I promise with the help of God. Let us, the members of Redeemer United Church of Christ, express our welcome and affirm our mutual ministry in Christ. We promise you our continuing friendship and prayers as we share the hopes and labors of the Church of Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may we continue to grow together in God's knowledge and love and be witnesses of our risen Savior. In the name of Jesus Christ and on behalf of Redeemer, we extend to you the hand of Christian love. Let us pray. O oh God, we praise you for calling us to faith and for gathering us into the church, the body of Christ. We thank you for your people gathered in this local church and rejoice that you have increased our community of faith. Together may we live in the spirit, building one another up in love, sharing in the life and worship of the church and serving the world for the sake of Jesus Christ. And may all the people say, Amen. Now let's join in singing our song of reflection as the deer.
prayer people of this week are our confirmats, Aaron, Adam, Isabel, and Jamie. We are all so proud of you. Uh, contact information for these individuals can be found in your bulletin and will also be in this week's Redeemer Reminders email. We have some additional prayer requests um, from Pastor Julie and from, um, sorry, we have two people here, from the Congregational Care Team, um, prayers for George and Mary Lou Everett as they continue to um, adjust George's medicine. He's been in and out of the hospital. And then prayers from Pastor Julie and Nikki um, for Jamie and Sonia as they are not feeling well. Um, that is why Jamie is not here celebrating with us today. Um, prayers for the two of them and for the entire family as they move through this time of feeling better. Prayers from Bonnie for her best friend's brother, John, as he begins his second year of treatment for blood cancer. It has been a long journey in and out of treatment with chemotherapy and bone marrow transplant. Despite the bumpy road, full recovery is still the plan. And then prayers from the Rockies, um, two of them. Appreciation together with family and friends. And then second, prayers for those with COVID and those affected by the loss of income due to quarantine, even if they are not sick. May we now enter a time of prayer and meditation.
We praise your abiding guidance, O God, for you sent us Jesus, our teacher and Messiah, to model for us the way of love for the whole universe. We offer these prayers of love on behalf of ourselves and our neighbors, on behalf of your creation and our fellow creatures. We rejoice for Jamie, Aaron, Isabel, and Adam. We give thanks for the time and commitment they have made on this stage of their faith journey. We ask for your guidance and blessing upon them as they have committed themselves to following Christ and doing the work of the church. May they always remember to rely on you and their faith in Christ to guide them in every moment of their lives. We give thanks for all of the adults and parents that committed to spending time with them and for supporting them on their journeys. We give thankfulness for the joy of being able to gather with family and friends. As you heard the prayer of Isaac and Rebecca, O oh God, and guided them in the way of your love, so listen now to those who call upon you. We lift up all those who are suffering from the lack of resources they need to, th need to thrive as human beings in this world. May everyone have access to food and shelter, education and health care, employment and child care. May we do the work to bring justice forward. May those that are elected to serve the people work to provide ways for all needs to be met. We lift up all the people who are suffering from depression and mental health, anxiety, stress, loneliness, and isolation. May they feel the power of your presence and your love for them. May others treat them with respect and care. We lift up all those that are victims of abuse in all of its many forms. May they be protected and receive justice in your name. We lift up all those that are affected by natural disasters and war. May we find peace and safety. And God, many of us are so very tired from the constant pressures that the pandemic puts upon us in all sorts of ways. We lift up all of those who are sick. We lift up all of those that have loss of income. Help us to be renewed. Help us to take solace. Help us to love more than we sin. We lift up all those that are struggling with their physical health. Today we lift up George, Jamie, Sonia, John. May your healing embrace bring comfort and peace. We lift up all those that are in charge of their medical care. May they lead with your wisdom and grace. We lift up their loved ones who are caregivers. Today, we lift up Mary Lou and the Gadeski family. May they find your strength in all they do. We lift up all those that are struggling with grief and loss. May the gentleness of your breath upon them bring them peace and calm. Raise us up, O Lord, for it is you alone who restores life and health to the suffering and to those who wander from the truth. By your grace, may we offer powerful and effective prayers for one another and the world. In the name of Jesus Christ, hear us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Having recognized the many gifts we bring and receive from one another, let us share what we have in gratitude. 
Today, we are giving thanks to the people who journeyed along with our confirmation students. Rick Locken, who joined Pastor Julie in each class session, and faith partners Mary Doparella, Chuck Kirby, Nick, Nikki Moore, and Ann Weed, who guided the students along the way. Pastor Julie and Rick Locken can please come up here to receive a gift from us. Rick's not here. Oh. Rick, um, Locken, you can open your gift now. I think he's on Zoom, John. He's joining Zoom. us on Zoom, but the confirmation class dropped off the gift this morning, so he can open it up with you, um, Pastor Julie, virtually. It's okay if we don't see him. You can't find him? No? Okay, he's not there. Oh, we made this hard to. <laughs> so, um, Rick's gift is an inscription that says, um, Well, there he is. Rick, may you be proud of. Okay, I can't quite read it from there. So um, there you go. You got it closer. There you go. May you be proud of the work you have done, the person you are, and the difference you have made. And then um, it's the 2019 through 2021 confirmation class. <laughs> Aw, this is awesome. It says, Pastor, noun. One, an individual who selflessly serves others. Two, one who strives to grow God's kingdom. Three, provider of encouragement and support. Four, one who instills faith and makes a difference in the lives of many. See also Julie Eklund. Thank you very much. The gold can for September is for blessings in a backpack. Blessings in a Backpack is a program that mobilizes communities, individuals, and resources to provide food on the weekends for school children um, in need across America and right here within our local community. These children might otherwise go hungry on the weekends. They are a national program made up of seven regional chapters and more than a thousand volunteer-driven programs. Blessings in a Backpack strives to ensure children do not go hungry on the weekends by empowering individuals and communities to take action. Locally, Blessings in a Backpack serves over 100 children in the Hamilton District, and that is through the volunteerism of us here at Redeemer. Redeemer, we thank all of you for the many things we are still able to do despite the pandemic. Thank you for being a committed church, even when we have to do church differently. Your time, talents, and treasure kept us going strong and continue to keep us boldly moving forward. Thank you for your ongoing support. You may leave your offerings for the church and the gold cans in the back of the sanctuary as you leave here today. You may um, make donations online via our website or mail your offerings into the church. Please join us in singing our departing song. strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel, but to give up I'd be a fool. You are my
Taking my sin, my cross, my shame, rising again, I bless your name. You are my all in all. When I fall down, I pick me up. When I am dry, you fill my cup. You are my Benediction. Oh. Um, this is the benediction. Today and every day, take care of one another, knowing that each of you is God's gift to this community and to the world. Amen. Woo! On behalf of Redeemer, we invite you to celebrate our confirmants outside under the tent. We have cupcakes and bottled water for you all. Please join us outside. Great job, confirmation class. <laughs> 